Welcome to Zero to Fight Stick, the tutorial series that shows you how to build arcade controls from the ground up. Okay, we have our case unwrapped. Next thing is, well, we need an interface between our PCBs and the outside world. Now, you could run a cable straight from them, and that probably wouldn't be very practical, especially with the retro board. Uh, having to change between different consoles, you'd have to keep changing the cable, open up the joystick, and plus even if we did that, imagine just one good yank and you could destroy your PCBs just like that. Wouldn't be fun. Don't recommend it. So we need a pass-through and we need specifically two types. The first one is this RJ45. If you're familiar with networking, you know that these are kind of Ethernet cords. Um, AkiShop sells a variety of cables that fit with this, so you can convert from USB, uh, which will work on PS3, PS4, Xbox, uh, to Saturn, to Dreamcast, and so on. That's This is going to be used with our retro board. And then we have USB pass-throughs, and these are going to be used with about every other Brooks board that's out there, and probably some others. And the idea is we'll connect, say, a short cable on the inside from the board to this, the back of the pass-through, and then the front of the pass-through will connect our main cables. Okay, what are we going to need? Well, first of all, you don't need everything here, but I just went with it, so you know I'll show you how to use it. First of all, you're going to need the pass-throughs themselves. Now again, I'm doing the retro board, so I need an RJ45 pass-through, and I also have the UFB, uh, as well as the Magenta, so I got two of these. All right. Now this is the SCDX cover. It comes in uh, four colors, I believe, but I used white and black for this, as well as their gaskets. Now these come in a variety of colors, and they do ship with these little rings. I'll talk about those in a minute because they don't give you any real direction on how to use those. And I was confused for a while as to what they do. All right, let's talk about what else you need. Well, let's, we're going to assume your case is open, so you might need a screwdriver for that. But we will need a mini screwdriver for doing our dirty work. And this is a PH1. And you might want a little flathead as well for doing a few other things. Uh, but this should do most of what we want. Also, your case may have screws, or you might have some screws there. Well, let's get them in the frame for mounting this guy. Uh, the screws on this that secure the faceplate are seem to be good enough, so I'm not going to worry about that. Anyhow, let's talk about getting these prepared. First of all, let's talk about the RJ45 one. Now, this front faceplate has two screws on it, so we're going to want to take this faceplate off. And you can do that just with the mini screwdriver, easy. Just make sure you set those screws aside. Also what you will need, besides that mini piece of RJ45, which will be about, eh, depends on the size of your case. Uh, I know Arcade Shock includes it in their kit, but if you want to make your own, make it about six to eight inches, depending on your case. Okay, now we have that front cover off. And because I'm doing the Magenta with this, so I can do any updates without having to un open up the case, I uh, also need a small pigtail mini USB, not micro. So that front is off, as you can see. All right, and the other thing we need to do is on these RJ45, or not RJ45, USB, uh, guys, you'll notice this front is usually ships this way, the, and that's not what we want because the back side would be uh, this connector and going to the same connector, which is a no no, and the cable isn't made for that. Uh, but luckily, this is reversible. So all you do is there's two screws here, and we just need to undo those. Make sure you keep these screws differentiated from the last one we took off because they are different. Once that's off, you'll notice this little ring comes off and this comes out. So all we do is you'll notice there is a notch here and a notch here. And this will only fit one way with the retaining notch up here. 
So that wasn't it. Just like USB, you always get it wrong the first time. And then once you got it set, it should look like that. Next, we want to slot this notch, and you'll notice there is a corresponding notch on the side here. And we just want to line this up with this notch. So, like so. And you should get a satisfying snap, which is down. Then, we just put the screws back into place. Like so. Easy enough. There is one last prep step, and this question's come up and I had it myself before, is what are these tiny, tiny little brass rings for? I thought they were spacers, I thought they were, I, I don't know, just throwaway items, I didn't know. Uh, it turns out what you want to do is if you have these guys, these, and these are great for you know keeping dust and such out, but they're also good for identification because you can get them in so many different colors. Uh, and I'll explain what my thought process and setup on why I have different colors here is just anyway with these little brass rings that you may not be see on the camera whoops, is just slip them inside and there you go what this will do is protect this rubber seal from wayward screws so you definitely want those in there all right now that this is set up I'm going to change camera angles and we'll be back in a bit to get started on the RJ45 install. See you in a second. Okay, welcome back. Now it's time to mount that RJ45. Here it is. Now you can determine which way you want it up, but uh, whether you like the tab you know, towards you or toward the bottom, whichever, it doesn't matter. However, you'll notice you can't just stick it up through. It's not going to work. What we need to do is go through the back, and I'm going to do it this way, kind of notch this guy in, and then line up the holes. So those are lined up, good. Next part is we want to slide our little rubber gasket on top, and get those lined up more or less. Next up, we have our SCDX cover, and we want to make sure this is going to match up a little ring as a gap for this tab. So just slide it in here. Then kind of squirm it in there. It's a little fussy, but it can be done. And undoubtedly now your holes have, are not lined up. So just be patient. And then when you're ready, See if you got it. In my case, no, don't. I don't think I got it. Oh, well, there you go. Cool. All right, repeat for the other. And you're good to go. Just make sure this lid flips the way you want it to. I kind of like it you know, when this is here is the top of the controller. So I like it flipping up, you might like it flipping bottom, it'll orient either way and work for you. Okay, that's how to mount the RJ45, pretty easy. Once you get everything lined up, that's probably the trickiest part, and then you're set to go. Um, okay, let's mount our last USB pass-through. Now this is a little different. This will fit, but what we want to do is take our rubber gasket, then our cover, then this, and figure out which way you want to go. So I like having the fat side up top. There we go. And it's right on, no problem. Then the hard part comes. So these will go through, don't you? Yeah, there we go. But you need to get these little nuts on the other side, and that's where things become a little dicey. So 
let me see if I can get one and then uh, but that's all it really takes and you will have it mounted. Now we'll go over actually connecting them in a later part of the series but all you really need is again for the retro connector you'll want the, the little RJ45 cable I believe it's included in the retro kit if you get that or you can make your own 68 inch cable and for the USB you're going to need a USB A to B short little pigtail cable I believe that also comes with the kit that arcade shock sells and uh, it makes your life a little easier alright that's really all you need to know about mounting new trick ports so good luck and enjoy